Is can we see the whiteboard okay? Can you see the okay? Mm-hmm. We're gonna do something a little different today. I'm gonna try a visual aid. You guys know if you've been here a couple times when we were at the old building, I love PowerPoints. I love visual aids. So without it, I was able to kind of be creative. I actually had another visual aid I was going to do involve me as Abraham Lincoln. (laughs) Um, But you know how God uh, tends to change sermons mid-sermon, mid-beard. But I decided to keep it anyway. You know, fun fact, um, there are some groups of people who who have just the sides Mm -hmm. of beards and not the middle. Did you know why? (laughs) I learned this the other day. Uh, It's because at one point it was mandatory for the military to have mustaches. It's a long time ago. And so in protest of violence, they decided to never have a mustache, and it just stayed. Uh, Yeah, those types of fun facts are things that I come across a lot because... In my day-to-day, I am always digging and searching and learning. And I'm finding this out about even when I read scripture. See, the other day I was, I made it through uh, the first few books of scripture. Then I'm going through the next, the group, we call them the prophets, right? The Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And then you have another group of prophets, considered prophets. And then I'm actually kind of jumped around a little bit. Now I'm back in. Um, Chronicles. And for all of you people who know, Chronicles starts out with a chronicled genealogy, as several different books in Scripture do. Um, Now, when I was getting to it, I started feeling super excited and happy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting through this. I'm not falling asleep. Because back in the day, I used to either skip over it I skipped over it, essentially. <laughs> Even if I was reading it, I was skipping over it. Let's let's be honest. I've gone through the Bible several times, different different things. Whenever I get to genealogies, typically I skip over it. Well, guess what? I'm in chapter one. I'm not skipping. I'm recognizing it. chapter two. I'm not skipping. I'm getting, oh, whoa, whoa. And then I go to three. Whoa, I know these guys. Yes. I know these stories. Four, whoa, five, huh? Six, okay, lost again. But, you know, I felt like it was God humbling me uh, because there was a a level, a sense of pride almost, you know, that how I was before, like, no, I didn't get it or how other people were. No, they didn't. And God says, no, there's always more. There's always more to learn. Always, always, always. And that's never a bad thing. The more we learn, if we're learning the best way possible, that will make us more hungry to learn more. Whenever we get a question answered, oftentimes that will lead to us having more questions, better questions, seeking God more, especially within Scripture. And so I was just coming across that revelation of the this, you know, you can call it an onion, you peel it back, you, however you want to describe it, of just more and more and getting more deeper and deeper into Scripture. Sorry, let me pull this out. And just, wow. Wow that the Lord revealed this to me, and wow that there's more to learn. I believe there's um, an old Jewish tradition that the rabbis used to praise God every time they came across something they didn't learn, because it was an opportunity for God to reveal himself more. And that is exactly where I hope I am now, if I can even see that I don't know something. And that's why I'm also very cautious of some things that I do learn, because I know how gung-ho I used to be two years ago or six years ago or whatnot on this definite definition, putting God in a box if I totally understand him and trying to press that on everybody else. And in reality, it's no, that was a nice revelation for the time, but it may not always apply in every situation. The whole deal with scripture is that it's alive. It comes alive to us. We are constantly learning from it. We all know this, but we have to sometimes remember Sometimes when we're looking, I want to, right the other day, I was trying to find a verse that spoke exactly to my situation. Well, it's not going to speak exactly to your situation, but it will point you to God and how God has acted in the past. Sometimes, yes, you will find the prophecies, but even in that, those prophecies, what good is it knowing the future if you're not talking to the one who holds the future? So we constantly come back. The whole idea of scripture and of doctrine and of theology or whatever you come to the conclusion with your own relationship with the Lord and those around you should always point you back to God. 
that's why every time I'm up here, it's the same thing. It's whenever you find a doctrine that no matter what you put a stamp on it, every time it's this, I feel like there's something that we're missing because we should always be pointing to God, even if we know 99% of the time, right? Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Then why did he curse and kill a fig tree, right? So these are, these are examples of outliers, right? So there's always outliers. So even if 99.9% .9 of the time, it is something you always have to go back to him and seek him. And even if it is going to be that thing, seek him and how he wants to do it. So one of the things that he was showing me is when I was reading these genealogies, I was like, this is kind of like behind the scenes. I love behind the scenes. I've got so many random, semi-useless facts in my head about behind the scenes things. I've also got very practical things in my head about behind the scenes. Did you know that that pint of blood that they that you take uh, at the blood drive, they give you what a movie ticket for, that can sell for $300. Mm -hmm. Did you know that the worst time for New York plumbing is in the Super Bowl halftime show? Because that's the time, what, 8 million people are flushing the toilet because they're all going to the bathroom? Like, I'm just saying, there are these fun facts behind daily normal things, and I love digging into these things. And so the scripture is all about that. And so when I was looking at the... at Chronicles, I was like, wow, this is kind of like behind the scenes, right? When you're making a movie or behind the scenes of these everyday objects. And then he pulled me back. Well, actually, this is kind of before the scenes. I was like, oh, okay, God, before the scenes, behind the scenes. And then he was showing me not just that, especially with scripture, it's beyond the scenes. How these can apply practical principles of how God acted and how God interacted with people into beyond the scenes situation. So we see how he was faithful, we see how he will be faithful. And then beyond the scenes, not just future, beyond the scenes of dimensional, um, spiritual, what's going on in the spirit. So when I was working on this sermon, I felt like the Lord spoke the scripture, what we learn, whenever we learn, it's, it's to make us understand these, these three things. It's be, before the scenes, behind the scenes, and beyond the scenes, and more. And I was really praying, okay, God, well, what, do, what, am I do, what am I supposed to do on Sunday morning? What am I really sharing? I'm sharing what I'm learning in hopes that it will help you get closer to God. I'm, I'm sharing what I'm learning because I feel like it's really helped me, and I believe it will help you. So that's really the point of, of what I wanted to do, is, is this before the scenes, behind the scenes, beyond the scenes. And what we're going to do to explain that is using an iceberg. A lot of us have seen these iceberg charts uh, in school or wherever you consume information. You've probably seen it at some point. That's my daughter. Thanks to my beautiful wife for taking care of Ember, but she might still make some noises. So this is kind of a general iceberg. Here's the water, right? We've all seen these, right? A lot of times they'll come with uh, some fun saying on a black background. And they'll say something like, this is the tip of the iceberg. You only see the tip of the iceberg, right? When uh, pastors love to do this. This is the sermon. This is the prep, right? Um, we see the idea of this concept of kind of like behind <laughs> every great blank is a blank, right? Behind every great man is a woman, right? Uh, uh, you know, some, I believe Jim Carrey says a woman rolling her eyes, right? No, but uh, behind every great <laughs> huh. successful man is tons of failures, right? Behind every great successful leader is tons of unsuccessful attempts, right? Whatever it is. So I was looking at this model and I was saying, man, this can really be practical to more than just I would say this is behind the scenes. Technically, it's beneath the scenes, but let's not get too caught up in details. So this is the scene. Wow. There's a reason why I don't use whiteboards. Scene. That's the scene. This is going to be behind the scenes. <laughs> now I know why I don't do this. 
This is the way he sings. But the thing is, there's more than just this. And that's what the Lord was showing me is this is great and this applies and you can even kind of mishmash. But there was something that happened before this iceberg got here. And so now we kind of got a time before the scenes. And then also after, this is both time, beyond the scenes. And then you can also go into the spirit. That's just going to be going to be across, right? Spirit. Also beyond. You could even say maybe beside, if you really want beside, because it's sort of parallel <coughs> to what's going on. So this was what was interesting to me, is everything that we do, every interaction we have, every scripture that we read, every time we hear God speak, there's all this going on. Somebody asked the other, the other week, there was something about um, why do people listen to Satan? It was some question like that. Mm -hmm. It was here. And my answer was, the reason why people listen to Satan is because Satan always shows you the, the beginning and never the end. Mm -hmm. So he kind of warps this, uh, this scene. He only wants you to see one part of it, right? So mm -hmm. in this moment, if you eat the apple, you'll be full <clears throat> of great food and whatever. But in reality, the beyond the scene, he, he makes you forget. Because in reality, you will surely die. Right? And before the scenes, hey, God said you already like him. So even in beginning, the beginning of Genesis, we see that Satan not only manipulated the moment of the scene, he manipulated it beyond and before at all of this. So I see that this is important because if we would just take one part of it, then we could get really confused. You could easily manipulate any one part of this. But if you work out all together, you're much less likely to be manipulated, right? Why do people sin? Well, they forget. You know, when I see these genealogies, I see God being faithful. Mm -hmm. That's God showing up. That's, you know, from Adam to Jesus, genealogies. Hey, all these genealogies, I was faithful. Jesus is on the scene. He, I'm faithful with him. What's going on behind the scenes is all that he's, all the prophecies that are currently manifesting and, and unfolding in all these different pieces and parts that are moving and beyond the scene is what he's going to do with redemption and the cross and with us and then we also see beyond the scene what's happening in the spirit there are angels there are you know he could have called down legions of angels we have this whole um this whole communication of in one simple bible verse if we're willing to hear it of these scenes so this is what i really liked and it's cool because this is ice. So, so let's just talk about an actual iceberg for the iceberg example. When you go on YouTube or any of these places to look up icebergs, you don't find icebergs anymore. I actually couldn't find, it took me a long time to specifically find an actual iceberg because icebergs have become synonymous with this idea of digging deeper or going down, seeking more knowledge or whatever it looks like. And so, um, and that's different from a rabbit hole. And we'll talk about that later because that's, that's also exists. You can kind of go down and try and figure things out. So when you go online, typically, well, when I went online, maybe my computer just knows I like to do these things, so it decided to recommend them to me. <laughs> it was really hard for me to find anything about an actual iceberg, but I did find a lot about an actual iceberg. An iceberg is awesome because Jesus is also what? He's, mm -hmm. is, he's referred to as the water, right? He's actually, and you can, you can argue because he's the word, he's also referred to as snow in Isaiah 55, 12. Mm -hmm. You know, his word will not return to it, you know, void. It actually says, At, like the rain and the snow, his word will not return void. I'm maybe paraphrasing that. So God, it, white as snow. So we see scripture about snow as much as I, for the most part, don't always see the beauty in the snow. This is... An iceberg itself is connected to Jesus. It's connected to scripture. An iceberg starts from a glacier. And a glacier, what it is, is it's a lot of the snow, the water coming to earth, one after another, after another, and after time, it just gets tougher and tougher and tougher. 
I was actually, I'm, I'm not an Illinois native. Um, I actually didn't really have anything to do with snow for a long time. And I still don't really totally know. Now we own a home. And so now I am forced to learn things, right? Like dripping faucets, etc. So back in the beginning of the winter, if it snowed, I was like, why are people shoveling? Like, it's just going to, what, hundreds of reasons. Why shovel? Waste of time. Well, what happens is when the snow falls, what happens? It falls, it falls, it falls, and the gravity comes and it compresses. And so at the bottom, it becomes like ice, mm -hmm. right? The gravity comes. So this is what happens over thousands and thousands of years of this snow falling down, right? And it's from the sky. And so what happens, it creates these huge glaciers and off of these this huge source of water they break off and then they go into the ocean so the before of an iceberg is very interesting um, and then we can see that the beneath is also interesting this is actually really cool if you google icebergs and you're not like me and actually get an iceberg you'll see this beautiful blue color but you know what it can be a bunch of other colors too it can be black yellow green, striped, even rainbow colors. The icebergs, they are beautiful underneath. Um, they hold a lot of water. So the current scene right now is there is a, a, a mound of fresh water that broke off and it is actually helping out and creating an ecosystem. The names for icebergs are fun too, right? Well, what is it called? Well, it's called a, ber a bergy bit is the size of an iceberg. And there's another one called a growler. Arr. And then you get to the biggest ones, they're called extra large. The biggest uh, iceberg ever mentioned was 1.4 trillion tons. I have no idea to scale what that is like, but just know if anything has a trillion, it's probably big. I also don't wanna to get too caught up in all the details. There's a lot going on. In this little scene, if you look at a picture of an iceberg, there's so much going on. Did you know that for over a mile out from an iceberg, there is a specific ecosystem of creatures that specifically live in that freshwater, saltwater mix that don't necessarily live other places? Specifically, did you know that when the ice was forming, it had nutrients, there's specific nutrients that are coming off of it. A lot of krill and small plankton, things like that live right around it because of the ecosystem it creates. Did you know that it creates a sound? The scientific name for the sound is Bergy Seltzer. They make a sound, Bergy Seltzer. It's what it makes, it makes little pops. Pop, 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 Bergy Seltzer. We look at this picture and we just see that. Well, what about beyond? What happens beyond time-wise? This is what helps create the earth you see. This water coming to earth helps form, it gives life, right? And then it goes and forms the ecosystems of other creatures moving forward. There's also, um, there's an interesting story where um, uh, glaciers, so it's connected to iceberg, there was a village that actually was able to create a natural glacier out of ice like this to create a wall where Genghis Khan couldn't get through and couldn't uh, continue his conquest. It actually protected people and kept them safe. Uh, because, you know what, you can actually grow glaciers and icebergs. Did you know that? There are man-made and natural icebergs? I did not know that. And what's, a, what's beyond it? Did you know there's a groups of people who actually worship icebergs? Yeah, um, icebergs, glaciers, things like that. They say that they're alive, they're moving. It's one of the few things that exist as both a solid and a liquid. And it's super fascinating, and I go really deep into it. And it's also... The idea is um, icebergs are now giving life beyond. We're learning how to harness them mm -hmm. to create water in places like the desert. It's a whole fascinating, fascinating things. So, right, so whenever we see this scene, right, whatever it is, there's always something behind the scenes, always something before the scenes, always something beyond, and beyond time, temporally, and beyond spiritually. And so... Hope I'm still I still got you guys with this. When when I see this, I see the Bible, this scene, this genealogy that seems boring. These are my descendants. These are people who came before me, who acted like me, who I can see in what I'm doing now and what I will be doing. I can see how God interacted with them. How is he moving things? Even with stories like Job, we're saying, oh, there was a an angel's convening and him a conversation with Satan. We see all these 
these different things. Now I'm moving very quickly, assuming that we all kind of have a little grasp of some of these stories. I can learn what happened with people who were before me. You know, I can learn what's happening behind the scenes right now. Well, what's happening? Well, there's there's angels. They're doing certain things. They're they're operating on prayers. There's when people get um, come into the kingdom. There's cheering from uh, the spiritual beings. We see that he's always with us. We have this kind of concept, and then we see of what this scene, right? If he was faithful to my descendants, he'll be faithful to me. And how was he in moving forward? And so. With this, let's just look at like the scene right now, right now, um, getting here, we're talking here. So what was, what is the scene right now? We're sitting here, maybe on Facebook Live, listening to a church service. So give me some things that happened before right now. Breakfast. Breakfast. Is there a way to turn this down? <laughs> so... The, what happened before is breakfast. Well, how far do you want to go back, right? Glaciers maybe even helped form some of the stuff around us, right? We have dirt roads. We have planning. You've got all these things. that This moment had a lot going on into it. In Before right now, what? The genealogy. I just read. That actually applies to now. At least up to Noah. But either way, it still applies in understanding the people that I'm reading and talking about currently. Genesis 1 through 6, that's the whole creation story. That applies before. We also see prophecies in the biblical canon and how that was created. So what's so what's going on behind the scenes right now? What's happening? You were being together, right? We're listening. We're, we're talking. Uh, Pastor Craig helped move the board, right? Uh, Marie's helping with keeping Ember quiet. She's doing a really good job. Thank you, honey. <laughs> She's laughing at my jokes. That's uh, something behind the scenes, right? Some people on the service, you might not see those things happening, right, on a feed or in person, but that, they're all happening, right? We've got radio waves, all that stuff. Well, scripturally, what are we doing? Behind the scenes, we're listening to the letters of Paul the Apostle and how we're to run a church, right? And meeting together, not forsaking the assembly, or, or, or meeting together virtually, not forsaking the assembly, or uh, having the prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers... You know, all those different offices meeting together, right? We're also moving on some of the prophecies. Some of us are praying. We have that. And so what's going on behind the scenes? So this is, this is something that's fun. Um, and I feel like this can be its own sermon at some point. But this is, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, Facebook Live people. Those are all dinosaurs at Pastor Jim's house. Oh. I don't know if anyone can see it. You can even pass it around. Um, so there are several different games that use the real world and place a map over it of, um, virtual gaming, you could say. You've got, uh, a bunch of different ones. And so this is, this one's actually Jurassic Park. So wherever you are, wherever you are in this virtual world right now, there are dinosaurs you can catch and train and all that stuff, as well as... Pokemon, and there's actually a JC Go, which is the Catholic version of Pokemon Go, where you can catch little, <laughs> yeah, you get bread, and you get wine, and <laughs> you get all these, and you got to answer That's questions good. about the uh, sure. the yeah. saints and things like that. That's you cool. go to churches, real, real life, physical locations, and there's this whole network of virtual things going on that unless you're plugged in, you would never even know, yeah. right? So... Mm -hmm. Th that's what's happening beyond the scenes right now, but in so you can see how that's easily a nice euphemism for the spirit realm, right? Wherever you go, whatever's happening, there's prayer altars, there's there's spiritual battles, right? There's you know we see the princes and the powers of the air. There's we war not against flesh and blood, but there's something else. So we can see this this going on, and through the virtual kind of shows you, but it's everywhere, mm -hmm. literally ever. As you know, yesterday. There was a whole event, uh, I mean, from like 12 hours long, wherever you went, where Pokemon had Pokemon everywhere. I mean, everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you play or not. So if you see someone on their phone like this, there's a chance that they're, they're involved. Same thing with Christians, right? You see somebody on the street. Listen, they're connected to something spiritual. I remember I was in New Orleans, and in New Orleans, 
I, yeah, I have to make sure I do an accent from the place that I'm talking about. So you know I've actually been there and talked to locals. In New Orleans, um, there's a lot of voodoo and dark stuff there. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, I didn't quite understand that it was dark until I walked from the all the shops and all the stuff into the, a church. I walked to a church, and all of a sudden, it, I couldn't even describe it. it. It was like going from like a fuzzy, dark smoke to like bright white. And I didn't realize it until I moved into it, but my spirit sensed it. I remember I, I'll be in New York City, and uh, oh, I didn't do the accent for that. New York, yay! Um, you know, did New Yorkers say yay? Whatever. Bagels, pizza, move right. your car. All right. If <laughs> Yeah, Ember likes the accent. Thanks, sweetie. Thanks for laughing. So in New York, I'd be walking by, and I'd realize I'd start to speak in tongues. I'd be like, well, why am I speaking in tongues? That's kind of weird. And then I'll look around, and that, sure enough, there'll be something like a strip club or uh, whatever, something like that. And I've seen that happen to me, or I've, uh, I've just seen it happen. And so there's something going on spiritually everywhere you go, and if you're sensitive and tapped into the source... You can pull it up and find it, right? Same thing with um, Scripture. So with, with this, we're just going to talk about a couple things. No matter what, wherever you are, you can go and you can see that this before, I'm going to use green, because before here I bought some colored markers, <laughs> right? So Genesis, we're just going to put Genesis, all of Genesis, that's our history, whether it's your physical history, uh, uh, like bloodline, because maybe you are descended from one of the tribes, or whether you are grafted in. That's what's happened before, right? You can also go with prophecies can kind of fit in a lot of these. You'll notice that a lot of these will overlap. Mm -hmm. So what's going on right now, well, you could just, we're just going to say epistles. We're going to keep this pretty simple because I don't want to get too crazy. That sounds like Ephesians, but Ephesians is an epistle, so we're good. Epistles, right? Those are the letters that he wrote to the churches. That's, uh, that's governing how we are right now in this exact scene. And then beyond the scene, with things that we just talked about, there's a lot of different things going on in the spirit right now that have been going on and continue to go on. It's his great love. It's his compassion that never fails, right? Compassion. It's the Lord's love. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us, so he's here with us. Right? And this can this can all go other places. Behold, I am with you until the end of the age. I will ask the Father who give you a helper that will be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. Right? And this, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. So there is an aspect of God being with us. That's what's happening beyond. That's the spiritual world. Instead of us tapping on dinosaurs and mm -hmm. hitting them with arrows, we can tap into to God and have a relationship with him wherever we are, wherever we're going. We can open up the word and see that. Well, what about, what about beyond time-wise? Well, guess what? God's going to work all things for good. He doesn't give us exactly the time frame of that, but he will do that, right? Turning in godliness, it talks in... 1 Timothy 4, it says it promises benefits mm -hmm. in this life and the life to come. Now, I don't think we should focus all the time on the benefits, but those who love God know that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you don't feel bad for recognizing that God has benefits. Mm -hmm. Examine your heart, sure, but hey, like, listen, part of you understanding God is knowing he's a rewarder. If you're focusing all the time on the other stuff, then, you know, there's something that you can pick up on to balance yourself out, right? It's interesting because in Hebrews 11, we hear scripture where we're told of all these different great men and women of faith that did all these great powerful things in Hebrews 11. And what does it say at the end of it? Mm -hmm. It says, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what it had promised since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us mm -hmm. would they be made perfect. So all that's happening before, it's building, 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 building before this scene, and we're going to build, 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 and then there, and it's all going to build, and it's something better that we're going to see and made perfect in the revelations, either currently or to come, right? Mm -hmm. So if we see Jesus had this perspective, Hebrews 12, 
We see, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders of sin so we, that easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, right, he endured the cross, right? Because he was looking here, right? Scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of God. So now... He's sitting on, that's a past tense, that's a current tense. It's, he's currently doing it, right? A lot of these things in Scripture, before the earth's foundation, the Lamb was slain. He's, God's on this whole different connection where any of this all flows. That's why we can't just be limited to one thing, because then we're likely to get swayed, right? Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Why? Because we can't lose heart, because we have to keep going, right? In due season, you will reap the harvest, because it's beyond, there's things that are beyond physically, like actual temporally, and actually beyond. These are very simple things. I'm not coming at you too complicated. I know I drew this, this bergy bit iceberg, and it might seem a little complicated. But these are, this is simple. Just look at scripture, something happened before, right? We hear context. Let me talk about context, okay? Context you got to find through your own research and listening to God. Mm -hmm. The uh, fact checkers on uh, social media, uh, I'm sure there are good ones out there. But let me just tell you, the last time I, I was just looking up icebergs, I had a fact checker official marker underneath the, the video telling me something. And you know what the source was? It said Wikipedia. And I said, you know what? All through school, they told me, don't use Wikipedia. Don't use Wikipedia. Don't. And now the fact checkers are pushing yeah. Wikipedia That's on right. my link for whatever it is that they were um, talking about. Whether I agree with them or not, listen, that's not the type of fact checking, okay? If I'm up here talking about a Berkey bit, you go look up a Bergy, a Bergy bit and see that it's actually a side of uh, an iceberg, if it actually matters to you. I've gone up to people in sermons and say, hey, you know what you said? Um, I'm not seeing it there. You said this, this isn't what I saw. And so maybe you can come to an understanding and, and realization of what it really should be or or find that maybe there's a blind spot there, you know, and you both come out. There's got to be some on your own. Now, here's the deal. We got a house the other day, uh, a couple months ago. Glory to God. And we had an inspection done. And this is on the official paperwork from the inspection. I'm not going to say the company, because probably this is what all of them do. Yay! Amber says, yay, inspections. <laughs> Uh, the inspection report is limited to only visual inspection of items clearly observable, readily access accessible, and specifically noted here. <coughs> what kind of an inspection is that? Yeah. Do you realize this is what we paid? I don't even know how much for. This is what you're probably paying for. This is this is why you don't just take me at the word. You don't just take scripture at your word. You you seek it out for yourself because this is. This is the promise that we're giving ourselves. This is the promise that the world is giving us. This is, right, visual inspection. Hey, the fruit's good and good to eat, right? Yeah, that's the visual inspection, but you forgot that God said not to eat it. You forgot that death is going to come. You forgot that sin will enter the world. You just go right here. You will very likely be misled. Let's continue. This company assumes no obligation whatsoever concerning the identification and or inspection of defects which are hidden, concealed, not clearly observable, not readily accessible, and there are no guarantees, warranties, expressed or implied whatsoever. Oh. <laughs> yep. Thank you for your inspection. I'm glad. Now, there are people that will go deeper, but just look at that. Look at how they cover themselves. I feel like that's Satan. He's like, listen, it's good to eat. You know, that's it. Oh, oh, not, I'm not responsible for what could happen or what did happen. Right? Like, he wants to keep your eyes off of all that and onto one mm -hmm. thing. I think that's that's more accurate to answer the question of why do people sin? Because you're looking at the one thing. You're focused on the one thing. You forget the before, the behind, or the beyond. And you're only looking at the one thing. And when you're only looking at one thing, unless he's the one thing above all one things, you're off. But actually, if this one thing is the one thing, he will naturally flow into all of this. That's why when I look at scripture, when I when I look at that genealogy, and I'm just looking at it and how complicated it is, I'm lost. But if I go back and look at the one thing, wait a minute, this is how you're faithful. You were faithful with Abraham. You were Abraham. 
Abraham, right? You were faithful to Abraham. That was Abraham Lincoln. Anyway, you, I was going to do a whole thing on Abraham Lincoln and his interesting life and how, but anyway, that's, that goes into the 90% of the, of the sermon that you see because 10%, or 10% of the sermon is what you see because 90% you don't see because I was going to do a whole Abraham Lincoln bit. And now I'm doing a Bergy bit. <laughs> so, right, there's all this going on. I, I see him, how he was faithful with them. I see him, and then as I look to him, when I'm asking for, for the answers, I then find that he's faithful to me and that he will be faithful. And it draws me in. It, I can't just stay in one spot. When I seek the Lord, it, it, it's almost like an amoeba. It just, it, just, it just comes out and just starts grabbing things. I start to come with realizations, and I start to understand things. He might not tell you exactly what's going to happen in the future, but he does tell you how he was, he's holding the future and how faithful he's been and will be in the future. You know, I think of Isaiah, uh, I believe it's 52. It says, the Lord will go before you. He'll be your rear guard, right? He was and is and is to come. And so we just see him in everything. You know, we see people. We can see the people, the iceberg. Why Why does someone snap at you, right? Hurting people hurt people, right? So there's something that happened before. There's something behind the scenes. I mean, even <laughs> Helen likes to tell people, you know, like, hey, like, get your act together. You're going to hell. Like, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> these are some of the beyonds people don't consider, right? Well, they have. And, I mean, these are, these are truths. We Lovingly, we're to share these truths with people, right? There's absolutely ways to do it. Um, we see that your situation is an iceberg. What's happening right now, right, with the snow or the cars or whatever, whatever the issue is or the, all this that's happening, this can be with the iceberg. The Bible, absolutely an iceberg, and God, absolutely an iceberg. God is the deepest iceberg we'll ever see. It's like God's like, if we're going with a water analogy, the Bible, Holy Spirit, the Lord, Jesus, they're all so shallow that even the babiest of Christians can wade in, but they're so deep that you will never touch bottom, even the most expert divers. So, and it's not bad that you don't always come to these conclusions, because like I said, the idea is to have a relationship and to hunger. The, the goal of Christianity is not to understand all this, it's to know who's in it and know him who is in it. Um, so let me just stop real quick and just talk about the difference between the iceberg and the rabbit hole. Because when I started looking at some icebergs, some of these icebergs turns into rabbit holes. You don't want to go down a rabbit hole. Listen, if all this stuff you start to dig into, it starts to become secret knowledge or stuff that, <coughs> that, not, that, that only you can understand, it starts to create a group that ostracizes itself from, the, from others that others don't want to work with. You know, if it makes you feel like you're more spiritual because you're learning it, Right, like there's a lot of red flags. You go down the rabbit hole, it starts to take you away from God or even acting like God. I remember I used to, <laughs> I used to hear this. They would say things like, um, like Satan's really working overtime um, before church because that's when couples get into the most fights and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if it's happened to you. Uh, we, we don't really get in fights anymore, but in the beginning, yeah, we got in some arguments before church. But what I realized was I'd love to just, oh, it's the devil. No, 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 no. It was me. So on. Uh, so the the thing was, let me just get to church yeah. that I forgot to be like Christ. And so rather than just oh the devil's no like it was on me. Like I was so adamant on being on time and whatever that I then forgot of how I'm supposed to consider my wife and care for her and our daughter and you know whether they're pregnant or whatever the issues were. There was a lot of stuff that I stopped looking and just said no. We have to get to church because that's just, that's what we need to do. I want to be with, and so, so, right, so if you're going down this, it's turned into a rabbit trail and we start to get away. Yes, I might have, whatever, right, learned more about God or whatever, but if I started getting away from being like God, mm -hmm. started getting away from my relationship, then that's the issue. And which is so crazy, because we think about church. No, 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 wanting to get to church is a good thing. Go without your wife or whatever. Listen, there could be different situations and that's fine. But for us, I feel like now God is realizing now that I'm in a better place, the reasons why we had arguments on church day was partly because... I was trying to trying to do something for God with God without actually consulting him during without <clears throat> actually being like him during that was my issue and so he's constantly working on all these things and and I am constantly digging and learning and growing and so Song of Solomon is not typically a book I like to talk about on Sunday mornings but 
there is a great example at the end of Song of Solomon 5. And at the end of Song of Solomon 5, we see this group, uh, this, this woman talking to these people about this lover that she lost. And let's just, let's just look at it. So this, this woman is lost and she says, daughter of Jer Jerusalem, I charge you, um, basically to find her beloved. If you find him, tell him I really want him. That's kind of the paraphrase, right? Mm -hmm. So she doesn't know where she is. he is. She's like, hey, hey, if you find him, tell him this. And so they start saying back to him, they say, uh, how is he better than us? Just, <laughs> right? Like, how, how is he so great? Like, what's up? Right? So, so at this point, she's going to be kind of, so the scene is, is she's looking for him, right? She's talking about him mm -hmm. and now, or she's, she wants to find him. And so now when there's like, what's he so great? So now in this moment, she starts learning about him. She goes down this iceberg behind the scenes of what he's like, what he's done for her. You're talking about he's radiant and ruddy. He's outstanding among 10,000. He's altogether lovely. He's my beloved. He's my friend. And so she starts going down this, this rabbit hole, right? She's lost him. That's where you could freak out. And now she's just thinking about him and who he is. And she expresses it. And as she expresses who he is, right? Because as we get on this, this behind the scenes, the whole before the scenes, What's it doing? Those people who are hearing, where's he gone? Uh, which, which way did he go? Can we look for him with you? If there's something crazy going on, whatever it is, this behind the scenes should be you seeking after the answer, seeking after him, remembering him, personally remembering him for yourself, right? And then that should then in turn cause others who don't even know him as well want to seek him with you. What's going to happen here? She remembers for herself. She gets a revelation. As she's talking, she says, my beloved's gone down to his garden. She all of a sudden knows where he is and then goes to be with him. That shows me several things. One, she didn't go crazy with uh, Hebrew roots and hermeneutics. She didn't go to some crazy revelation. That might happen sometimes, and that's awesome. But you don't necessarily need that. Right? She starts thinking about all these things and this question that she had, oh my gosh, where is he? I know exactly where he is. He revealed himself to her and they came together. That is what should happen with this before the scenes, the behind the scenes, the beyond the scenes. That's what's going to happen if you're doing this right. It's not going to go into a rabbit hole and all this or whatever. You're going to find him and people are going to want to seek him with you. Even people that don't know him and so it's just beautiful because before the scene, you know, he built this, this garden for her and he's did all these things for her. And behind the scenes, he's in the, he's actually in the garden. He's providing, he's protecting, he's gathering fruits and spices and working hard for her. And then beyond the scenes, he's spending time with them. Others are coming into the presence. As you seek after him in the scene, you'll learn about him and his past before the scene. And you'll start talking about him and what he's doing behind the scenes. So together with those around you, you'll all be drawn in to be with him now and beyond the scene in every way possible. We could easily just go about our lives, whatever it is, whether it's looking at a person or a situation or a scripture, and say, I'm limited to only the visual inspection of what's clearly observable, readily accessible, and specifically noted. <laughs> you can do that. And you know what? That's okay if that's where you're at right now. And this is just a call to go deeper. We were just talking about that in the car, right? Mm -hmm. There was a guy, he was healed. We started asking him all these questions, all these questions, all these questions. This is behind the scenes. This is all I know. I once was blind and now I see. And that's all he knew. And that was enough. If you will just join me in prayer real quick. Lord, we just thank you so much that you are before this scene. That you are behind the scene and you are beyond this scene. We thank you so much for your goodness and your love and your mercy. We thank you that as we seek you, you join us. You show us where you are. You come with us. We thank you, Lord, that if we seek you with our whole heart, that you will let us find you, as you say in Jeremiah, 
We thank you, God, that you are just beyond everything we can imagine, that your hands are in all these things, that you are, you are faithful before, you'll be faithful in the future. Lord, let this, let this help us see you better. Let us help us see others better. Let us, let us just love you. Let us bless you with the knowledge that we learn today. Let us bless others with the knowledge that we learn today. Let us just be a blessing to all those. Let us draw others to want to seek you for, our, for, for whatever it looks like, whatever it is. Now, Lord, let us be a blessing to others and draw them to you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for everything you are, everything you do, and more. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I've got tons of notes, so if you want any of these, um, you can go to the Bold Follower Facebook page and message me or whatever, and I'd love to give them to you. There was so much here. God is so amazing. Amen. And the more you zoom out, the more amazing you get to appreciate, the more amazing you get to experience, the more amazing you get to be with Him. It was really nice. Thank you. I learned a lot.